So, you've done a lot of research about the role microchimerism might play in cancer. Yes and no. Yes I mean, no. most of what I've done um, is autoimmune disease. And it is true that um, I used to go around giving talks and saying if I were smarter, what I would do is look at some of the really good things these cells do. So eventually I got smarter. And uh, we did do some work with breast cancer, and we are now working actually on the mother cells that are in cord blood as having the potential to be anti-leukemic. So these cells, so microchimerism is cells from the baby continuing to cir circulate in the mother or cells from the mother continuing to cir circulate in the baby. Yes. And it sounds like there might be something useful about those cells you bet. still circulating in the baby? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. How can they possibly be useful? Well, um, in the setting of transplant, it's known that if you have um, a donor and a recipient who are uh, mismatched a little bit, that even though there's a risk of getting something called graft-versus-host disease, there's less of a chance that the person who's getting the transplant will recur, for example, with leukemia. And so logically, we thought, okay, if there's HLA mismatch, which are the genes that help you know what's the so primary it's, it's genes, basically. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And they're on the human sixth chromosome, and they're the ones they type for if they're looking for a donor mm -hmm. for a match. Um, so these are going to usually be half mismatched. That's the normal situation because half of a child's genes will come from the father and half of your mother's genes you didn't right. inherit. Right. And so we thought, well, logically, wouldn't this also be the case if you have a small population of cells that have a little different HLA? It's like they have a different eyeglass and they can see a precancerous cell easier. Hmm. Simple way to kind of think about so it. So some of those circulating cells might knock out cancer cells because they're... Or precancerous cells, yeah. Interesting. That's so is the there bottom. some evidence supporting this? Yes. So there's a series of three studies. Uh, the first author is V.K. Gotti, um, and they all looked at breast cancer because it's known in breast cancer if you had a birth that you have a reduction in risk of getting breast cancer. Um, there are also some caveats to that. It's at an earlier age and a few others. But at any rate, he looked and he found that women who had breast cancer had a deficiency of this microchimerism of fetal origin. Hmm. So the decreased risk of breast cancer for women who have had children could conceivably be related to cells from babies still circulating in them. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I use this slightly more awkward expression, microchimerism of fetal origin, because uh, one day I was just walking down a street and I thought, well, we're being bewitched by language here, which is what Wittgenstein, the, the philosopher, said often happens. Because when we call this fetal microchimerism and the woman's son is in college, we're misleading ourselves. So we need to remember that those cells are also going to age. They're not going to stop aging just because they were fetal at one point in time and acquired by her. Interesting. Yeah. So do we actually know that they age? Can you tell older microchimeral cells from newer ones? We, we don't know that. We, we've actually asked that question whether we Looking could... Looking at telomere length Exactly, whether we could look at something like telomere length. Um, but um, if they didn't, we would certainly have the fountain of youth, and I doubt that we would have an access to the fountain of youth mm -hmm. here. So are there differences in aging in women who have had babies and been pregnant from those who haven't? There are definitely differences um, in lifetime risk of disease according to pregnancy history. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of those divide according to whether it was actually resulting in a birth or it was a miscarriage. So for example, there's a protection against getting rheumatoid arthritis if you've had a birth. Really? But Is it just a little protection or a big protection? It's a 60% reduction wow. in um, year two. Something happens in the first year after delivery that it goes the wrong, it goes the other direction. But after that, there's a reduction in risk. But then interestingly, what happens is it attenuates as time elapses. So that's one of the, when I so, stopped so using the term. So having a child or just having a pregnancy? Having, no, then that's where it divides. It's having a child. If, if it's just a pregnancy, there, there's no benefit. Hmm. And it's actually in the last trimester when the exchange of cells is the greatest. Is that right? Well, it's a, this is a good question in humans. How much cellular traffic is there? Um, most of what is actually found in the mother's blood is cell-free DNA during pregnancy. 
Interesting. And it probably has quite different immunologic effects, and it's packaged differently. Uh, but obviously, some cells must get over too, because otherwise, you wouldn't be finding these cells 20, 30, 40 years later. Mm. So we're having an epidemic of autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease and diabetes type 1 and the like. It sounds like several of these may be influenced by microchimerism. It, this is a good question, and um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think the autoimmune diseases are so diverse, it's hard to make a blanket statement about what's going on with autoimmune diseases in general. Mm -hmm. um, and the last time I looked at rheumatoid arthritis, there was one point in time when it was thought that the incidence was increasing, but then after that, uh, other studies came out suggesting that after that, that it was actually decreasing. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure about that, and it's, um, y you have to have the reservation that um, we change the criteria by which we diagnose a disease, and we change our ascertainment of the disease and the milder forms of a disease. So I don't know if autoimmune diseases are actually but the increasing. basic idea of autoimmune diseases is that our own immune system attacks some of our tissues. Yes. And causes problems. Yes, and I'd like to just turn that on its ear, at least try it on, uh, and see um, if it's helpful in our thinking about these diseases, to say maybe some of these aren't autoimmune. Maybe um, the situation starts with what uh, my um, colleague, uh, who's a retired man in the UK, Tony Davies, one day emailed me and said, perhaps you should consider the placenta as a selective immigration policy. Interesting. Yeah. And I thought, okay, that really fits. And so, so perhaps the, wait, the, the placenta as a selective immigration. And then. So what does it do, perhaps? Okay. And so then you conceive of the biological self, the normal healthy biological self, as more of an ecosystem. And then actually an autoimmune disease, for example, could be losing tolerance to your immigrants. They, they actually mm -hmm. are a part of you. Right, right. And, and they probably have good function. So this is a case where immigration is good for you. Yeah. Except for when it's not. Yeah, and, and except when sometimes when maybe you get more than one set of immigrants and maybe the immigrants don't get along. So one fly in this whole business don't women get a lot more autoimmune diseases than men? In general. The, there's a couple exceptions to that. Type 1 diabetes is fairly equal, and good pastures disease is reversed. And what are, what are some where women have more diseases? Those are dramatic. Um, autoimmune thyroid disease, almost 10 to 1. Hashimoto's women thyroiditis. Women. And, mm -hmm, yeah. And how about um, uh, multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis is about 2 to 3 to 1. Really? So it is more That's female huge. predominant. It's just not as dramatic as autoimmune thyroid disease. Uh, mm -hmm. Rheumatoid arthritis, 3 to 4 to 1. Scleroderma, depending upon what study you read, 4 to 8 to 1. So one good question I know you thought about is whether or not microchimerism might help to explain some of these differences. That's one of the original things that I thought about in beginning to, I was always uh, puzzled by the fact that women have more autoimmune diseases. Um, certainly it looks like microchimerism can modulate disease risk. Um, and I say that because of uh, some work that we did on rheumatoid arthritis, and this is the one that shows that um, a year after a pregnancy, there's a reduction in risk of rheumatoid arthritis. But then it's vaccine-like because it, it diminishes. So after 15 years, you have no protective effect. Hmm. Um, so I think it can modulate it. I don't think uh, microchimerism can explain the female predominance uh, across the board so of these diseases. So it's not as diseases. if these immigrant cells are causing problems and explaining the difference. No. For example, in sy systemic sclerosis, which is another name for the, the more difficult subtype of scleroderma, um, in children, it's still four to one, mm. women, women to, uh, females to males. So is there a dose effect for number of pregnancies and protection against autoimmune diseases for women? That literature for the diseases I've looked at is a little more complicated. Um, there are a couple diseases where that's been looked at. Um, and actually, um, in a non-autoimmune disease, uh, people have looked at multiple gravidity, you know, multiple pregnancies um, in Alzheimer's disease. Mm. 
Hey, now, you might know this, but my understanding is that Alzheimer's disease is a little more prevalent in women. It's the only disease of the common diseases that is more prevalent age-adjusted for women than men. Big mystery there. And you had some interesting statistics about Alzheimer's disease, I think, as well. Well, the thing that I found really interesting is um, a couple papers that showed that uh, women who have given birth to a child with Down syndrome, the mother, the woman that gave birth, has an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. A huge increase. And so then my... Five times or something. Okay, and so my... Yes. So my question there was, okay, they told me the placenta mm -hmm. was a barrier and it wasn't. They told me when I was in medical school there was a blood-brain barrier, but maybe it's not. I mean, right. maybe it's relative. And maybe these cells get into the brain. And what's to protect a woman against harboring genetically abnormal cells of all kinds from miscarriages hmm. over the years, um, particularly if some of them get into the brain? And that's, it's a big open box. I don't think anybody's that really looked at it. That seems like this. such a huge clue to Alzheimer's disease. It should at least and, be looked and at. And kids with uh, with trisomy 21, Down syndrome, also do tend to get Alzheimer's disease yeah. much younger in life than other people do. Yeah. yeah, and has anyone looked at their maternal microchimerism? Sounds like something you're know. ready to do. Well, um, to tell you the truth, um, when I first launched the whole concept that uh, these cells should be looked at in autoimmune disease, um, surprisingly, I didn't get a lot of resistance. But when I tried to launch this in terms of looking in the brain, I got a lot of resistance. Because people said it's impossible? I don't know. They always seem to find some trouble with it. It's not like I changed my ability to write a grant. Right. Um, but it was, um, um, I mean, I had to write things eight times before I finally found an audience to be willing to give me just a little bit to actually look in the brain at all. So is that research ongoing? How is that coming? Well, we managed to look in a uh, human autopsy female brain, and we did find that the majority of those female brains had male DNA. Now, we didn't have so pregnancy. So is it just male history. DNA? Or? Ju that's, uh, we have one picture of a cell, but we don't know what kind of cells they so are. So this is cutting edge research, and you will have an answer sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> Technically quite difficult to actually um, work with the kind of techniques in the brain and figure right. out what kind of cells they are. Mm. Yeah.